Hi, and thanks for watching this video on Lean and Agile for Hardware Product Development. There are dozens of possible topics for Lean or Agile, so I had to figure out the best place to start. So I decided to focus on what's most important in terms of business impact, and that happens to be lost profit from delays in new product development, otherwise known as cost of delay. Now, team members don't often think of it, but one of the most important goals in terms of a new product is the overall profit that the product makes in the long run. After all, financial performance was probably the biggest factor in getting the project approved in the first place, so it's going to be something that's closely tracked and managed in the end. And there's a really good reason for this. Most people are generally aware that their company wants to develop products faster. If you get to market first, you'll usually sell more products and at a higher margin than someone who gets there later. And if you can iterate faster, after a few product releases, you'll have the dominant product in the market. That makes sense intuitively, but most people I talk to don't know the actual value of going fast, or the inverse, how much it costs to be late. It's true, you can tell teams to hurry because time is important, but something changes when they know the actual dollar value of being late. And there are other benefits to knowing your costs of delay. For example, when two projects are competing for the same resource and one has to be delayed, everyone can agree which product has to wait, and it's not decided by which program manager has the most influence. It also allows teams to know when it's smart to pay extra to expedite things that are truly impacting the schedule. But those are just the obvious answers. In another video, I'm going to show how to create a project economic model which analyzes the economic sensitivities of three other project variables that impact our lifetime profit. And those are project expense, product cost, and sales performance. Once you know those, the teams can make trade-off decisions regarding things like scope, resources, design decisions, and schedule, all in relation to a common variable, which is their impact to profit. That way, not only are better decisions made, but they're also made faster and without any hassle. As this slide indicates, cost of delay usually has the biggest impact, and since we can use it for other things, we might as well develop it first. But before I show the model, I like to give credit where it's due, and it's often hard to determine the source of ideas, but this is one where we do know the source. Don Reinertsen is our favorite author on all things related to lean new product development. In 1983, he was a consultant at McKinsey, where he did a study and then wrote an article where he stated that six months of delay can reduce a product's life cycle profits by 33%. He later co-authored a book with Preston Smith where they showed how to calculate this. The book is called Developing Products in Half the Time and is still available on Amazon, so I'll put a link to his website below in the description window. Now the spreadsheet I'm about to show came from chapter 2 in this book, but in Don's second book called Managing the Design Factory, he went into more detail on various delay scenarios that I'm also going to show. By the way, either book is really good, but if you only have time to read one, I'd get Managing the Design Factory. We used to hand it out as part of our training because it's the best introduction to many of the most powerful principles in lean new product development. So, what is cost of delay? Very simply, it's the amount of profit you'll lose if you're late to market with your product. The units are in dollars, or whatever your local currency is, per unit of time. If the unit of time is not labeled or stated, it's usually one month, and this number is unique for each product a company makes. So, for product X, you could say the cost of delay is $470,000 per month. And remember, this is profit, not revenue. If you're wondering how this number can be so big, you'll see when we develop the spreadsheet. But for now, I'll show you a simple graph. The axes on this graph are profit and time. So the profit for the life cycle of this product might look like this if we include the time prior to launch when we're spending money on development. So when the product is one month late to market, you might be tempted to think that we lose just the sales from that month and our sales curve shifts to the right one month. But that's rarely the case. First of all, we spend more time and money to get it launched, and then when we do ramp up, we usually don't get to the same sales volume we would have, 
So we lose the difference between these two curves for the entire life cycle of the product. And you'll see in a minute, that can be a lot of money. So let's take a look at how we calculate it. We have blogs and eBooks that cover the advanced details on cost of delay, and we'll link to those in the comments. So I'm only going to show how to develop the basic spreadsheet here. Basically, all you need to do is create a simple set of projections for your unit sales, sales price, unit cost and development expense, and marketing expense. Enter those in a column for each year you plan on selling it, and make year one the first 12 months after your initial sales. And since your development expenses happen in the year before you start selling it, or in some cases two or three or four years before, be sure to include a column for those years prior to launch. You can also add your sales and general and admin expense. This will make the numbers a bit more accurate. We don't want to make this too complicated, so it's usually okay just to add them as a percent of sales. Be sure to talk to each department to get their numbers. If your company has never done this before, they might be surprised that you're asking for these numbers, but they should have them. And be sure to explain what you're doing and why, because later on their buy-in is going to be important when we start using this model. Now then, once you have all that, you can create a simple profit and loss section. So all of the numbers down here are calculated from the numbers above in the yellow cells. These formulas are straightforward. Sales revenue is the number of units times price, COGS is the number of units times cost, etc. And then at the bottom, show your profit by subtracting your cost of goods and total expense from your sales revenue. To keep this simple, it's a good idea to leave taxes out of this and note that in the row label. And finally, create a bottom row showing the cumulative profit before tax by adding the profit of each year to the total cumulative profit from the prior year. This row is where we will get our numbers for the cost of delay. Now just to make this easier to read, we copy three of these numbers down here into a summary table. So for the baseline, we enter the cumulative profit from the first year, third year, and total right here. These numbers are copied values, so they stay the same when we make changes later on. And then we create two more columns for the new value and the change amount. The new column values are links back to the cumulative profit cells, and the values in the change column are the difference between the new and the baseline. This way, it's easy to see the change in profit when you model your one month delay. Notice that down here, we also copy and paste the original baseline projection numbers. This is so they're easy to get back when we've made a bunch of changes above. So once you have your baseline profit numbers, you can scroll back up and model a one month delay. This is another place where you'll want input from sales and marketing on what they think the lost unit sales will be. I'll also show some various market scenarios that you can use as a guide, but for now, let's assume a one month delay will cause a 10% loss the first year. That's easy to assume because one month is just over 8% of the year. And unless you have a monopoly, you will probably lose more than that. And to remain conservative in this demo, let's assume a 6% loss for the next year and then a 2% loss for each of the remaining years. So in that case, these numbers will look like this. And because we worked an extra month, our R&D costs will increase by that amount as well. In reality, they might increase by even more if it was an all hands on deck situation, but I'll just add one more month and I'll assume the delay did not increase our marketing expense just to be conservative again. Now then, we can see that our new cumulative profit numbers for each of these years showed up here and now we can see the change in profit or cost of delay. Notice that in just the first year, we'll lose over $330,000 of profit, and in the third year, over $600,000, and the cumulative lifetime cost of delay is over $800,000, just for being one month late to market. Now I know this is a random example, but would you have guessed $800,000 before you saw this? That cost of delay is 5.5% of the lifetime profit for just a one month delay. And that happens to be right in line with the study 
Don Reinertsen did, where he said a six-month delay could cost you 33% of your lifetime profit. Now, if you're surprised, don't worry. Most people are. Don also tells a story that he used to ask team members what they thought their cost of delay was, and he kept track of the variation. And he said the average variation between guesses for people on the same team was 50 to 1. Think about that. People on the same team had perceptions that varied 50 to 1 on what it means to be late. And this is one of the reasons why it's so important that you get everyone aligned on the value of product development velocity. Otherwise, you can see how there will be disagreements on various decisions. And those disagreements not only cause unnecessary frustration, it's also highly likely you're going to make a wrong decision. As for this one being $800,000, I can also tell you that's right in the ballpark of a lot of them. We've helped a lot of companies develop these, and looking back, I wish we had kept track of them just so we had more data. But the lowest one I remember was $200,000, and most of them were right around $1 million. And the largest I ever saw was $14 million. It was a cell phone related product, and they basically lost their whole market for that product version if they were late. Anyway, let's look at the next level of detail regarding these. When we were looking at the sales loss in our spreadsheet example, I said there was a decreasing loss the first two years and a 2% loss each year after that. Those assumptions were based on a typical market scenario, but they can vary a lot depending on what kind of market you're in. These are explained in Don's second book, and they look something like this. The first example is of a monopoly market. The dashed line is showing your baseline projections, and the solid line shows the sales you'll get if you're late. Notice that in the monopoly scenario, you end up with a pent-up demand, so your ramp is actually steeper, and you end up with the same level of sales as you would have. So your lost sales is represented by the area here. This scenario has the lowest cost of delay, but it's also very rare. In a market development scenario, you'll ramp up at the same rate you would have, and still reach your peak, but at a later point. And in a typical market, some of your customers will go elsewhere, so you won't get the same peak. And for a product with a high switching cost, you'll ramp up slower than you would have, as well as get less sales. So this one has the highest cost of delay. And in all of these scenarios, your sales still end when they would have, so your total market window is shorter. To be clear, these are greatly simplified with straight lines just to make a point. In real life, these two lines would be curves of some sort. So how do you know which scenario you have? You'll have to figure it out, and I encourage you to not develop this on your own. Get help from sales, marketing, product, or program management, and finance. This will not only make it more accurate, but as I mentioned earlier, it's critically important that you develop buy-in for this overall concept as well as the final number you get, so that it's accepted throughout the company. You will be using cost of delay to make decisions that affect all departments, so it's important they know where it came from and everyone agrees with it. Another thing to consider is that this was a simple spreadsheet model that I showed. Once you start using it, it will probably be easier to create a sales loss scenario page where you can enter the lost sales by percentages for various amounts of delay and then show these on a graph. It's not only easier to estimate percentages rather than units, but the graph helps you visualize the impact and get consensus on whether these numbers are correct. By the way, it's not always true that a six month delay has the same impact as a one month delay multiplied by six. So if the lateness of your products varies by very much, it's probably worth it to estimate multiple delay amounts separately, and this makes that easy to do as well. Also notice in this example that the yellow line is the baseline, and we also modeled being one month early, so it actually shows the net gain. After all, if you're implementing the right lean and agile tools, you should expect to get done early. Another thing to point out is that we're using relative years starting with product launch but you can also use calendar years. You might have to do this if your finance group wants it to match your company's fiscal year, or if you want to be clear where the seasonal sales bumps are. 
It's a bit more tricky to do it that way because if your target launch is on October 1st, there will only be three months left in that year. So a one month delay will be at least one third of the remaining year. So you have to be more careful when you enter the numbers, but it will work out. Whichever method you use, remember there might be nonlinear impacts from delay for things like trade shows. Missing that by a month could lose almost a year of sales if that's your primary marketing event. In fact, one of our case studies is of a medical device company that thought they needed 14 months to finish their product, but they literally got done seven months early and made it to the trade show a year before they expected to, and they reported a $15 million increase in profit because of that. That case study was presented as a webinar for Management Roundtable a few years ago, so I'll see if the recording is still available, and I'll include that in the link below as well. So let's review the benefits before I wrap this up. You most likely hear senior management talk about the value of speed, but I rarely hear a number applied to it. If you do this, you'll finally be able to attach a number to that general directive. And once you know your cost of delay for each product, you can use it to prioritize projects and therefore have an easy way to resolve conflicts. The team members will know when it makes sense to expedite things, and they will be much more sensitive to the importance of the schedule. And by the way, I want to include an important footnote here. I've heard engineers say that they are already going too fast and they need more time. So I want to be clear, the correct lean and agile methods do not require cutting corners or sacrificing quality or working harder. In fact, it's the opposite. Once you've implemented a basic set of lean and agile methods, the team members will have clear priorities for all of their projects so they won't have to multitask, they'll know when their tasks are urgent or not, and everyone can see when someone is overloaded. So it feels like there's less work and it's all getting done faster. And the final benefit is that it allows you to put a dollar value on the cost of your queues. If you want to improve your cycle time or project throughput, you have to start seeing and fixing your queues. So let's wrap up with a summary. First of all, do this. I promise you, it will change everyone's perspective and it's not that hard. If you're on the fence, do the survey first where you ask them to guess what they think the cost of delay is. And if you see a lot of variation, then you'll know this is important. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Any number you come up with is going to be better than guessing. The goal is to get everyone more closely aligned and have buy-in to the relative size of the number, not to have a perfect number. And you get buy-in by having everyone participate and provide feedback on the model. And it's better to have a simple model that everyone understands than it is to have a complex model that's only slightly more accurate but people don't understand it. So that's it for this one. If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll be happy to answer them. Or if you want the template, we'd be happy to share it as well. So we'll make it available as a download on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified when we release more Lean and Agile training videos. Speaking of which, since this topic focused on the importance of development speed, the next video will be about some of the major causes of delay during a project. In fact, we already have a video on our homepage that has two paradigm shifting ideas around the biggest cause of late projects and what to do about them. You can get to it with the link below as well. So thanks for watching and here's to faster projects.